So I want to start the year off by talking about another Moon Man pen because I actually really like the brand Moon Man and where they're going with their pen collection because they're producing really great little fountain pens and using really high-end materials such as acrylic to produce all of their pens with the exception of the Moon Man ADS which is something that I really dislike. Thankfully this new pen, the Moon Man Wankai Mini Fountain Pen is closer to the quality of the Moon Man M2 than the Moon Man ATS. And for $13, I think this is a pretty cool um, pen to consider if you're interested in getting very small little pocket pens. For $13, what you get is a pen that is made brilliantly from a piece of acrylic. And as well as that, you get a pen with a pretty decent nib. But before we talk about the pen itself, let's talk about the packaging because packaging is something that is increasingly more common with more expensive Chinese fountain pens. Pretty much anything over $10 nowadays and you will get packaging. And now Moon Man isn't exactly consistent with their packaging. For the Moon Man M2, you get a polypropylene clamshell box, but for the Moon Man Wankai Mini fountain pen, what you're gonna get is a pretty hard, pretty dense cardboard box. And on the top is a little diagram of the pen, and on the side is some, um, I'm not exactly sure, some symbols with the word Moon Man on it. And if you take off the top, you're gonna to get two pipettes to fill this pen up because it is an eyedropper pen, a little cutout for the pen, and underneath the foam, there is gonna be a box full of Moon Man branded converters because thankfully you can eyedropper or you can um, use converters in this pen. At 15 by 8 by 4 centimeters, this is a pretty bulky little case. I'd much rather use this with a pen case, but um, if you really want to, you can use this as an everyday carry box, though it is bulky and it will wear out after a lot of use because it is, at the end of, end of the day, cardboard. Next, let's talk about the elephant in the room, and that is the size. Yes, this is a pocket fountain pen, but this is pocket fountain pens taken to an extreme. I've never actually reviewed a pen that is as small as this. This pen is even smaller than the Pilot Petite One, which I thought was a crazy little fountain pen. So, Uncapped this pen, sorry, capped this fountain pen is going to be 8.7 centimeters long, though uncapped it is 8.1 centimeters long. But surprisingly, when you do post this fountain pen, and this fountain pen has threads at the end, so you can screw the back on, it actually boosts it up to 12.1 centimeters. So, in terms of the length, this actually isn't a factor that will really limit this fountain pen. Yes, it's not all that long. 12.1 centimeters though is usable. Compare it to most other pocket fountain pens and it actually is very, very comparable. And I'd say in terms of the length and how it posts, this is probably the most comfortable pocket fountain pen because it screws on. The barrel is actually very, very um, flat. Well, it's a flat curve. There's no bumps or anything, which makes this very, very comfortable to hold on to. And while yes, 12.1 centimeters is not long, if you are looking for a pocket fountain pen, I'm pretty sure most of you are going to know the issues with pocket fountain pens, but holding it is all right. And in terms of the diameter of the pen, it's actually pretty good at about, uh, 12 millimeters in diameter. It's actually a pretty thick fountain pen. Though the issue that I have with it is not the length. The issue that I have with it is the step up. Because this pen here has a pretty harsh step up. This step up here is about two millimeters. And while that might sound a little bit small on paper, in reality, this is a pretty harsh step up. And while some people do like step ups or don't mind them, I really cannot find a grip that is comfortable to use for more than say 10 or 20 minutes worth of use. This is the single biggest issue that I have with this pen. The step up, I really do not like it one bit. And while I can use it for quick jotting down, which is perfect for a little pocket fountain pen, long writing stints are just something I cannot do with this pen. 
Another issue that I've had with this fountain pen is that it actually gets very, very slippery. And it's a little bit odd because I have used the Moonman M2, which is also acrylic, and that fountain pen doesn't seem to get as slippery as this one. After a lot of use, it does tend to get very slippery. It builds up with oils, and as a result, you need to rub it with a cloth, and that should keep it going for you know, whenever time until it gets slippery again. Looking at the materials and the build quality, I have to say this is one area where Moon Man absolutely shine in terms of Chinese fountain pens because they do a really great job. This fountain pen uses acrylic and they have manufactured it really well. In terms of the materials, it feels really, really great and high quality in the hand. They've obviously used a pretty decent quality of acrylic for this pen. And as well as that, in terms of manufacturing, this pen has been manufactured really, really well. These pens are are made from a piece of acrylic and that's evident from the fact that there aren't any um, parting lines that you would get from a mold and there are obviously a bunch of angles in the pen which are reminiscent of the angles that you find on drill bits so this is obviously being machined on a lathe and they have finished it very very well there are no machine marks left and there are absolutely no scratches and as well as that the threads have been cut really really well they mesh together very very nicely and there's very very little play in the threads it is really really high quality and as well as that after about a month of everyday carry use there are very very few scratches and the scratches that are on there are the scratches that you would expect to get on plastic pens they're very very hard to see they're micro scratches and i would expect those from an acrylic um pen yeah, an acrylic body pen one thing that I did doubt when ordering this fountain pen was obviously the strength of the mechanism that is going to hold the cap to the back of the pen. Because looking at it, this is not a very big um, lump that is hanging out the back here. And even just looking at it, there's only two to three pitches holding this to the back of the pen. And that's obviously going to be a weak spot for this fountain pen. And I certainly tested it. I applied a fair amount of pressure and I can safely say that this certainly can handle the forces that are you know, used when riding this fountain pen as well as applying a little bit excess. Though I will say don't try to apply too much force to it because it certainly will snap. There's not much hanging in there but it is going to be enough for everyday use. Next, let's talk about the filling mechanism because a huge advantage of this pen over pens such as the Moonman M2 is the fact that they have given you the choice to either use cartridges or eyedropper this pen, whereas the Moonman M2 is eyedropper only, which is a really, really great idea. And the cool thing is Moonman do give you a bunch of cartridges included with the packaging, which is a really great thought from them. Though, if you don't want to use the cartridges, which I will say are very small and only hold about 0.6 or 0.7 milliliters of ink, you can go ahead and eyedropper this fountain pen, which is something that this pen obviously was designed to do. The cool thing is Moon Man know this and they have incorporated into the design an O-ring right here at the start of the threads, which means that you're going to get a very, very good seal and silicon you know, um, silicone um, gel really, really isn't necessary or vital. Yes, you can do it, but I have done it and I didn't use silicone and I didn't get any leaks. Finally, let's talk about the nib of this fountain pen. And for whatever reason, the nib that I got on this pen, even though it looks very visually similar to that of the nib that I have on the M2, it actually is a different nib entirely. I'm not sure why they have changed it. I'm not sure if it's just over time they have changed manufacturer and supplier, or if it's just a different nib that they use for this pen. But for whatever reason, it is very noticeably different. Now, thankfully, the change in nib is for the better. I was all right with the nib on the Moonman M2. It was a little bit stiff, though it wrote well. This one here, however, is very, very different. This one here is very soft, and it's actually very fun to ride with. But before I talk about that, let's just talk about the quick specs. First of all, this is a nib that has a plastic feed and it comes in a nib unit. All you have to do is twist on the nib and the nib unit will screw out, which is very good for swapping out the nibs. 
This one here obviously is a number five nib. You can see it from the size. This one here is a stainless steel nib. It has a Chinese fine nib. And as well as that, it looks very, very generic. It says Iridium Point Germany on it, and that is something that you will see on a lot of generic fountain pen nibs. And I always am a little bit skeptical when I see Iridium Point Germany on these, because obviously these aren't made in Germany, and I've tested a lot of pens with this nib, and it can either go one way or the other. It can either be a very, very poor example of a nib, or it can be decent. But thankfully, this one here is actually very, very good. Looking at it, you wouldn't expect all that much, but when you go ahead and write with it, this nib is really nice to write with. First of all, let's talk about the grinding. Now, this nib has been ground surprisingly well. It's not butter smooth. You can certainly hear the scratch when you use it, but the thing is, you can hear the scratch, but you can't really feel the scratch. It feels very, very nice to write with. There's no digging into the paper. It really, it writes very, very nicely. Next, in terms of reliability, this is one thing where this nib is sort of let down. The feed is almost identical to that of the Mooman M2, though this feed, it looks like, has been set up more for eye droppering rather being, than being used with a cartridge. Because when I use this pen with a cartridge, I have to sort of limit how fast I write with this pen. And as well as that, it does suffer a few uh, flow issues when writing it for long-ish periods of time, it can start to dry out a little bit. And if I do some very fast writing, it will start to skip. It's reliable in terms of it doesn't hard start, but in terms of fast writing, when you use it with a cartridge, it just doesn't keep up. Though that's a very different story when you eye drop this pen. When you eye drop this pen, it's very, very reliable. It doesn't suffer any of the issues that I have with flowing. It keeps up very well, and it is a very nice nib to write with. So if you are serious about using this pen for long periods of time, I would recommend that you do go ahead and dry drop this pen. Finally, let's talk about flex. Now, this is not a flex nib, and it's not even a semi-flex nib. But the cool thing about this nib, and the thing that really allow me to see that they had swapped out the nib compared to the nib in the Mooman M2 is just the softness and the amount of flex that I get from this nib. Not a flex nib, as I said before, but when you do apply some pressure, you will notice that this pen is very, very springy and you get some very nice line variation. And it's actually very, very enjoyable to write with. And that's one thing that has kept me going on this pen. I can sort of get around with the ergonomic issue if I get to use this nib. You can get some very nice writing from this nib and you don't even have to slow down. The feed can keep up if you eye drop this pen and you can get some very, very nice writing. Writing. And that's one reason why I actually continue using this pen. It's very nice to write with. Okay then, welcome to the writing sample for the Moon Man. And Wankai Mini. This pen has a Chinese fine nib and the ink that I'm using is Quink Food Coloring. And I think under this light, it actually looks very nice. Let's get a quick writing sample. And as you can see from that writing sample, clearly there's a little bit more going on than just writing. There is some nice shading in the ink. A lot of the bits where the nib isn't flexing, such as here, is a lot lighter than where it is flexing, so here. And that is providing a little bit of depth to the writing. And as well as that, there's some very nice line variation going on. And that's line variation going on at normal writing speed because the nib is very soft. 
Um, looking at the writing sample, it's also very nicely written. There was no skipping and probably minimal scratch on the audio. There is a little bit of scratch, but it's not that bad when you're using nice paper such as Claire Fontaine. If I want to do um, faster writing, I'm pretty sure it will keep up because I have eye dropped it. And as you can see from there, it easily keeps up. It's a lot wetter when you eye drop it and there is gonna be no skipping whatsoever. And in terms of that, let's take a quick look at the wetness because it's a lot more wet ever since I started to eye drop this pen. And just look at that, that is very, very nice. I'm pretty sure it would start to bleed on cheaper copy paper, but here it's very nice and wet. So if you wanna use it on copy paper, maybe look at using it when this pen has a cartridge. In terms of line variation, there's very little line variation to be gained from the grinding of the nib. And in terms of flex, that's no pressure. And let's start to build up the pressure. And that is pretty much as far as I would push this nib. So no pressure and full pressure. So you can get some very nice contrast between the lines. And that's really all I look out, look out for when I talk about flex. I prefer a lot of contrast rather than the pen flexing. And that is very, very nice indeed. That is just beautiful. In terms of reverse writing, Chinese pens always seem to do reverse writing really well for whatever reason, but this is pretty good in that, at that. And that's pretty much it for the writing sample. All right, conclusion time. What are my thoughts on the Moon Man Wang Kai or Wang Chai mini pen? Well, first of all, this is not a pen that is made for me. It really isn't. Look, I do use pocket fountain pens. One of my favorite fountain pens of all time is the Pilot Prera. But the reason why I use the Pilot Prera so much is A, because it has a very good nib, and B, because it's very comfortable to hold and I can use it in everyday situations. Yes, the Pilot Prera is a little bit bigger than this pen, but with the Pilot Prera, it's very comfortable to hold on to. You can use it in everyday situations without needing to use a pen case. It has a clip which also acts as a roll stop. Yes, it is a little bit more expensive than this pen, but I would much rather use that pen. But in terms of actually reviewing this pen and talking about this pen, look, I it really depends what you're looking for if you're looking to get this pen. Because if you're looking at getting a pen which you want to use you know, in everyday situations where you're not pulling it out with very short notice and you're using it at, at a desk, I don't think it's worth getting this pen. I think it's better to look at something like a Moon Man M2, which is far more comfortable to use and has a far greater capacity. This pen really is for someone who genuinely wants a very small pocket pen, because if that's what you want, there's nothing better than this. It's a crazy short pen, but that's really all it has going for it, that and the nib. Honestly, I... <sighs> If you can stand the harsh step up, I think you can go ahead and get this pen. But for me, this is one thing that is really holding this pen back, and that is the ergonomics. For jotting down small notes, this pen is great, but for longer writing stints, for me anyways, I find this a very tough sell. I think it's a very nice pen, but they haven't gotten it perfect just yet. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video.